Hi guys, Dr. Aaron Traeger here. The most important part of your well visit appointments with me is getting your questions answered. And sometimes when we spend a lot of time answering questions, there are some topics that I wanted to bring up or talk about that we just didn't have time to address. The purpose of this video is to really um, make sure that everything that I wanted to focus on is being mentioned. And also it's nice that you can share these videos with the people that weren't at the appointment with you to help kind of go over some of the things that we talked about. At the one month visit, there is a lot of things that are going on that are frankly really, really exciting. Uh, the sleeping patterns, eating things like that are starting to get a little bit of a routine. And I remember feeling at this point with my own kids that, you know, you felt like you were finally starting to get somewhere, but you were still, whoa, way, way, way tired. And that's actually really normal. It's normal for people to feel that way. At the one month mark, okay, when it comes to feeding, you should be feeding, you know, basically enough to make the baby gain weight. And when you guys come into the office, we'll talk about the growth curve and how much we're gaining and what we expect to be happening during that time. Uh, if you're breastfeeding, most moms are feeding about seven to 12 minutes on each side, about every one to two to three hours or so. And if you're formula feeding, you know, they're normally taking about mm, two, three ounces, you know, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But the thing when it comes to feeding that's important at this point is, is that they're feeding and they're actually gaining weight. Babies have this funny habit. If you feed them too little, they seem to cry a bunch. And if you feed them too much, then they seem to spit up a whole bunch. What's also kind of funny about the one month appointment is, is sometimes no matter how much you feed them, they just seem to cry quite a bit. And that can be pretty normal. So the growth chart and how we're growing is actually the most important at this point. And usually about an ounce a day is where we should be. We should be over our birth weight and moving on up just fine at this point. Um, the other thing that should be happening is going to the bathroom. Babies go to the bathroom quite a bit. Uh, it's kind of funny. They pee um, at least more more five, more than five or six times a day. Uh, the pooping can be very variable. Okay, and if you ask grandma on, and grandma, if you're watching this, I'm, okay, thanks. But, uh, but when it comes to pooping, it can be many times a day and it can be up to many days in between. It is completely normal for babies to go to the bathroom to have a poop 10, 20 times a day. That's actually pretty normal. And it's also pretty normal for them to have a stool once every 10 days or so, okay? And it, and it just depends on how many diapers the baby wants to go through. So we don't necessarily think you need to change the formulas or change what you're eating for your diet with breastfeeding to help move this along because it may not make that big of a difference. However, we would be really concerned if you're saying things like, yeah, it is really firm or if it's bloody. Bloody poop from now for the rest of the baby's life, those are things that are pretty important that we would want to hear about right away. Now, when it comes to sleeping, okay, at this age, it's very, very, very variable. Uh, once you're over your birth weight and you're gaining weight really well, then the expression really turns into don't wake a sleeping baby, okay? If they wanna sleep and they wanna go longer than a couple hours, that's okay. But chances are at this age, they're gonna be waking up every hour, two, three, and to still really have their nights and days kind of confused. Um, at this point, at one month, most babies are waking up every hour or two. And, and, and even having this really fussy period in the evening, uh, I remember with one of my kids, it was almost like you could set your watch to it. It's like, so the baby's crying. Yeah, it's about nine o'clock at night and we're gonna have a fussy period for a couple hours and that's normal. So people will talk about this thing, they'll talk about colic and they'll say, well, my baby must be colicky. And what we call the definition of colic is any baby that cries more than two or three hours at a time that lasts, you know, more than two or three days of the week. Okay, some babies it's every day. Some babies they just seem to get off on a little rut. And, uh, and it's okay to go ahead and change them and feed them. And if you need to put them down, let them cry. So a little thing, and, it, and it's hard to talk about, is this thing called postpartum depression. If you haven't noticed when you're in the office, we'll actually have a screening form that will have you fill out every single time you come in until about six months of age because we're looking for postpartum depression. And the reality is, is that this is real. And the reality is, is that it's really common in dads as well. So um, it's hard to say this, but it's easy to kind of joke about it, but it's true, very, very true about this. But postpartum depression is something that, you know, everybody, a lot of people experience. And I know how difficult it is to be um, dealing with a fussy crying baby. Um, my wife and I both vividly remember those first couple months with our oldest, where um, you know we both would say, "Man, I understand how you can lose your cool and how you can shake your baby." Okay, um, it makes you really, really tough when you're sleep deprived and there's lots of crying and things like that. So if you start to feel that way, you know, go ahead, put the baby down, let the baby cry. It's okay. Uh, my wife used to have this great expression with our oldest. She'd say, "Well, at least I know she's alive." Yeah, yeah, we know she's alive, that's okay. And then with some time, that thing should start to improve uh, quite a bit. But your mood 
It's something that you need to pay attention to. And the hardest part about postpartum depression, in my opinion, is, is that it really does suck the joy out of having a baby in away from you. It's, it's, it's really tough. You know, um, you look on Facebook or you talk to other folks and some people just seem to have this magical experience. Um, and if you're having that, that's great. If you're not, um, yeah, that's hard. That's hard. And we'll, and we'll get through it, you know, and let us know because talk to us, talk to your OB. Uh, we've got some great options to help with postpartum repression there. And then the next thing is um, developmental milestones. Okay, so we've talked about eating, we've talked about going to the bathroom, we've talked about sleeping. You know, at one month, there's not a whole lot that's going on. Uh, most of the time, they're getting a little bit of head control. Uh, when you pick them up and hold them, they're, they're not like this limp noodle that's just kind of flopping over you. They can kind of support themselves in their shoulders a little bit, but they're starting to get more tone than they had when they were a baby. The other things that start to come with looking around and a lot more smiling and stuff, that's a little bit later on in life. But the most important thing that you can do for your baby at this point is tummy time. So we want them to be on their stomach when they're awake, when they're sleeping, put them on their back. But during the daytime when they're awake, put them on their stomach. Two or three minutes while they're upset is way more important than 20 to 30 minutes straight. Okay, so if you're getting a minute or two, 10 times a day, we will take that. Um, if your baby's chill and we'll give you 10 or 20 minutes on their stomach, enjoy it. Get down on the ground with them. But we don't want them to be someplace where they can fall off and get hurt or things like that. And then when it is time to sleep, yeah, we really mean it. We really want them to sleep flat on their back in their own little crib or crib or bassinet or something like that. Preferably in your room at this point um, is what you're going to feel most comfortable with. So a couple other things that babies do at this age, which are just kind of funny, and this, these may not apply to your child, um, but I remember being really, really freaked out by this uh, with our first. So one thing that happens is, is you notice that babies will do this thing where they'll seem to breathe, you know, really shallowly. And you'll be looking at them, you'll be like, what's going on over there? And then all of a sudden they'll go, oh, and they'll start to breathe really fast and start to pant. And you'll sometimes see their stomach moving in and out. And that's a really normal thing that we see frequently at this age, and it can last for months and months. And we call that periodic breathing of the newborn. And a lot of times um, it kind of comes and goes, you'll see it, you won't see it for a while, but it is freaky when you see that. Okay, so just kind of be aware of that. But if you're concerned about your baby's breathing, we are concerned about it too. You need to let us know. And if the breathing thing is lasting longer than a couple minutes, we're definitely concerned about that too. You got to let us know about that. Um, but it'll kind of come and go. The other thing that's kind of funny is, is the babies will make like a squeaking noise. Okay, now if you're getting a squeaking noise or clicking noise when you're breastfeeding or formula feeding with the bottles, uh, it may have something to do with the way the baby's latching on there. Maybe the pressure's too tight. Let us know if you're experiencing those things. But a lot of times when it comes to breathing, you'll notice that the baby will kind of do this thing where they'll make like a squeaking noise. It's like a, uh, uh, or a little noise like that. And that's normal at times. If the baby's doing it all the time, we need to hear about that. That's a big deal. But the reason why this is happening is actually really interesting. If you feel your ear, your ear is kind of firm because there's harder cartilage in there. Now, if you feel your baby's ear, it's like the most soft thing ever, okay? And it's this little soft, floppy stuff, and that's because the cartilage hasn't had time to develop. If you feel your windpipe, your windpipe is hard and rigid. If you feel the baby's windpipe, it's soft and floppy. And all the cartilage that's in their airway, in the back of their mouth and stuff like that, it's kind of soft and floppy. So when they breathe, they can take a breath in and they can make it squeak. And just like a, like a double reeded instrument, like an oboe or a bassoon or something like that. Um, and that's a normal thing. Now, some babies, they get this quite a bit, especially if they're flat on their back, especially after, they're, after they've are after they been fed and they get a little spitty and things like that. That's kind of normal and they can snort or sound like a pig afterwards. And that, those are all pretty normal things as long as they're not doing it all the time and as long as the feeding and stuff is going well. If you have concerns about it, we want to hear about it. But it is something that sneaks up on you and it'll freak you out. It, it really will um, for quite a while. So, um, so yeah, so those are the really big things that are happening in a month. A uh, month is cool, uh, two months is even better, okay? Now, there are some folks, and you're gonna hear me say this, that some babies, some people love babies, they love babies. Uh, babies are great, they're really great, but man, it gets a lot more fun. So when we see you guys next at two months, there's a couple things that we're gonna be doing. The first thing is, is that we're gonna be doing the two month vaccines. And when it comes to the vaccines, um, babies get the same things at two, four, six months. And those are all things that protect you against the scary stuff in the world. Things like whooping cough, meningitis, really scary infectious diarrheas and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet about vaccines and vaccine safety and things like that. And what we want you to know about this is that if there was any doubt in our mind that the vaccines weren't safe or effective, then I wouldn't give them to my own kids, okay? And we wouldn't be experimenting on it with your guys's. But this is the smart thing. This is the safe thing to do. And if you have questions about it, you gotta let me know. I'd love to talk to you about vaccines. It's actually one of my favorite things to talk about. And we can spend as much time as you need with those kinds of things there. But when you guys come in at two months, we'll do the two month vaccines. 
And what's cool about the two-month vaccines is once that happens, everything seems to change. Life gets a lot easier. We don't have to worry about infection as much as, pot, as before. And uh, we can talk about Tylenol and stuff like that. But we'll talk about that when you guys come in at two months. Uh, over the next you know, four weeks until we see each other again, tummy time is your friend, okay? And try and slow down. Try and enjoy this time as much as you can because, you know, true story, it'll be over before you know it. Um, the nights are really long and the years are really short. So um, that's a common thing that makes you sad when you think about it. So that's okay. Well, you guys, uh, let me know if you need anything and we'll see you guys at the two-month visit. All right, have a nice day.